Hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild and because you guys managed to get the last underrated weapons video to 300 likes and in fact at this point it's almost at 600 likes which is just incredible. I can't thank you guys enough for all of the amazing support on this series but since we did pass 300 likes, we're here with another underrated weapon. And today it's a weapon that I've actually used quite a lot in the past and it has been one of my favorite, I guess like, uh, different weapons to use and that weapon is the air rifle. There's been a lot of you that have been suggesting this in the comments and I 100% agree that this is an incredibly underrated weapon and there's a few different reasons for that. One of the biggest ones being the fact that it's actually decently powerful and can take down stuff like deer with not too many issues at all, but it's also a lot better at long range than you would expect. And one of the reasons for that is because with the Hyperion scope you can actually use the mill dots to add an extra 50 meters to your shots. So if you're 0 to 100, each of these dots is going to be an extra 50. So this last dot right here would be 250 and then this uh, spot where the line gets thicker would actually be 300 meters. So you can make some incredibly long shots with this thing. And I think that's primarily what we're going to do today to kind of show off how good it is. But as always with this series, if we can get this video to 300 likes, we will show off another underrated weapon in another episode. So if you haven't already, be sure to like the video. Let's get this thing to 300 likes and then we will have the next episode. But with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get to our first shot of the day. Let's try to get as broadside as we possibly can. And then we will get a shot on this thing. Now, another really awesome thing about the air rifle is it's actually incredibly quiet. So if you're far enough away, you're probably not going to spook anything, which is really, really nice. But since this guy's 200 away, we will use the second mill dot after we zero to 100. And we should be able to hit this thing pretty easily. And just like that, it looks like we got a solid shot on that blacktail deer. It does take a bit of time for them to start losing HP, but as you can see, we did get into a lung with that shot. And this is what I was talking about with this being just a super reliable gun for long range. A lot more than you would expect, because it was dead on with that second mill dot. Now, I don't really know too much about which dots to use for the Argus scope, but at least for the Hyperion, it's pretty easy to know which ones you need to use. Now this might be a little bit risky, I don't even know if it will work, but we are going to try a frontal shot at 150 on this blacktail and just see how it does. And in fact, we're going to do this right here. And we'll just see if we can get into a lung. I don't know how well it will perform, but it looks like it did get into a lung. I swear, every time we do one of these episodes, I become more impressed with whatever gun we're using. And just like I was saying, it did run quite a ways, unfortunately, but that's just one of the downsides to using the air rifle. But personally, I feel like the positives greatly outweigh the negatives. You have an extremely quiet rifle that can take things from pretty long range and be very reliable. And unfortunately, you have to sacrifice some kill time because of that. But as you can see, a 146 gold level 4 blacktail was actually no match at 150 meters on a quartering angle, which is kind of crazy. There's a lot of just regular rifles that have issues with shots like this. Uh, stuff like the 223 and some of the handguns would probably have trouble with this shot right here. However, not for the air rifle. And here's that first one that we shot from 200 meters. Let's go ahead and take a look at the penetration. And it got completely through the first lung and almost even reached a second one. I don't think the air rifle can get double lung. That is another downside to it. And also, also that's probably why the kill time's pretty low. But it does get good penetration at 200 meters, which is pretty awesome. It's very reliable. Oh my gosh, we got ourselves a piebald whitetail deer out there. That is super awesome. It is just a level one, but that is a piebald. So I guess now would be a good time to try and test this out on a whitetail. However, I don't know where this guy's going. Not entirely sure where he's headed. So we might end up taking this guy with uh, just a normal rifle, but I prefer to get him with the air rifle if we can. So let's uh, see if we can get a good angle on him. Unfortunately, it is just a fence rack, but that's still really cool that we got ourselves a piebald whitetail deer right in front of us. Let's uh, see if we can get a range on him. 
I do need to get him to go alerted so that he won't run off too far. But it looks like we are within range of taking him out. And he's still unfortunately moving. There we go. We got him to stop. He's at 100 meters. This should be a very easy shot. And just like that, we got him down. That is awesome. Well, there he is. There is our piebald white-tailed deer. Like I was saying, it's unfortunate that it is just a level one, but the air rifle did really well. And actually at that range, it was able to get double lung. So at 100 meters, you can double lung a white-tailed deer. That's uh, pretty nice. It actually killed it pretty quickly too. A lot faster than I was expecting. So I honestly use the air rifle at 150 plus meters most of the time when I'm using it. So I guess I kind of overlooked the fact that you can get double lung with it when you're closer than that. That's uh, very interesting. You know, even with as much as I've used this thing, I can't remember getting too many double lungs, although it might just be my memory being bad, but I feel like that did better than what I'm used to seeing it do. But yeah, as I was saying, a lot of the shots I have took have been really long range shots on diamonds with the air rifle, so we might end up discovering some new things about it today. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? <laughs> that is a level 5 moose. Oh my gosh, that thing's huge. Well, we can't take that with the air rifle, but that's pretty awesome. So, the host of this server was level 18, which means they probably have never been up to this portion of the map. And it definitely shows because we got ourselves a level 5 moose here and we just took out that piebald whitetail. Uh, however, yeah, there's actually no zones up here besides the ones that I've discovered. This is crazy. This is virtually a fresh map. Uh, they were hunting down here before they left, and as you can see, this is where most of the zones are, but I think the entire northern half of the map is unsearched. I'm actually really excited to see what else we can end up finding. That is super cool. Let's, uh, try to get this thing down if we can. Is that it? Yeah, that's it right there. So it moved over to that spot. Uh, we also have a level four there along with a couple black tail deer. We will be taking another shot on some black tail, uh, to further test this, uh, air rifle out, but I think we've got something better to chase after for a second here. Now, I'm not 100% familiar with which racks end up trolling and which ones actually make diamond for the moose, but I feel like this is one of the big ones. It definitely appears that way at least, so I want to make sure we get a good shot on it, and I think what we'll end up doing is trying to get a hard shot with the M1. I think that's going to be the play, so I'm going to move up a little bit closer and try to get into a good spot to where we can do this. Alright, so we're about 130-ish meters out, and I think this should be the perfect opportunity to take a shot on this moose. It sucks we can't take it with the air rifle, but I want to make sure we get full score on this thing and actually have it make diamond if it has a chance of making it, so let's uh, use the M1 and try to get that hard shot. We definitely didn't get the hard shot, but that should be probably lung. Uh, we'll know shortly. Yeah, it's definitely long because it is losing HP, so uh, we should be fine. I'm glad we got this thing down. Now, uh, hopefully we can find some more things to shoot with the air rifle. You know, it's crazy how we never used to find Diamond Moose, like hardly ever. And then after they did that revamp to Leighton Lake's Need Zones and Drink Times, I ended up finding a lot more. Just all of a sudden, after they made that change, I started finding so many more diamond moose, and I think it's because they changed the spots that they feed, so they're a lot more near the water than they used to be when they're feeding, and that was kind of the case here. It's actually black tail drink time, but there's moose that feed and rest like all around the water, and I think that's one of the things that is accounting for more diamond moose ever since they made this update. I mean, I'm not complaining though, it's nice to have a lot of the animals close together when they're feeding and drinking. It definitely makes it so you can have more action-packed hunts with better trophies, and that's a beauty right there. Let's uh, see if we can get it claimed in a spot where it's cleared. Uh, that'll work right there. It's just a gold, unfortunately, at 265. Man, that's unfortunate. I was really hoping that this thing would end up making it, but sadly, it didn't quite make it. Which is uh, very unfortunate, because I do think that's probably... One of the cooler looking moose that I've seen, I really like these long tines that stick off the front. That's uh, really nice. I definitely like the way that looks, but unfortunately, not anything that we're going to keep. 
Well, today has been something. We found a piebald whitetail, then we found ourselves a level 5 moose, and now we found a level 4 blacktail that has tiny antlers. <laughs> it just keeps getting better and better. Uh, I guess we will get to like 200 meters away, provided that's actually accurate. Yeah, so for once it's actually ranging them properly. Let's uh, go to 200 and try to take this thing out with a front shot just to kind of make things interesting since it is just one of these weird level fours. Uh, we will actually take the shot right now. Um, somehow that didn't hit. There, that one did. That was weird. It almost looked like it went through him. And unfortunately it looks like that shot did not connect the way that we needed it to. I'm actually not sure what went on there. The first shot appeared to just go straight through it. The second shot apparently didn't get penetration into the lungs, so that was just a very strange situation altogether. But, I mean, we do have some whitetail deer out here, so we could try a frontal shot on a whitetail at 100 meters and just kind of see how that works. I think this should work a little bit better since we are closer. Uh, but I guess we'll find out. Let's wait for this thing to go broadside and then we'll get it. And... <laughs> it moved and then my dog got in the way so I couldn't shoot it again. Uh, this is, this is falling apart. <laughs> Hunter! What are you doing, man? You can't be getting in front of me like that. You're blocking my shots. Alright, so we've got ourselves a blacktail deer at about 250 meters or so uh, when you actually range it like this It shows that it is 253 uh, The binoculars unfortunately are ranging directly behind him, but if we look at his feet, it's around 250 253 So I think this is gonna be a good shot to try and make let's uh, have our dog sit so he doesn't get in our way anymore since he loves to do that <laughs> but Let's uh, attempt this shot now. This is going to be the hardest one yet. And uh, after the mishap with the last one, uh, I'm not sure how this is going to go, but I guess we'll find out very shortly. Ooh, that looked solid. The question is, did it penetrate through the shoulder or not? It did. We definitely got it. So when everything goes as planned and Hunter doesn't get in our way, we end up hitting those shots, it seems. And because of the fact that we use the air rifle, very few of the deer actually spooked off. Most of them are still here. There's a couple that are running from me sprinting down here, but most of them stayed put. So we can take out a couple more, and I think that's exactly what we will do. So let's aim slightly above, or uh, slightly above his back with the first dot. And that should be good. And as you can see, it didn't actually make any of these flee. They just end up going alert. And this is another one of the major upsides to the air rifles. You can just wait for these to calm down and then take a shot at another one. And that is exactly what we're going to do with this guy. Ah, that might hit a bit low. But the primary uh, thing that we were trying to show off there was just the fact that you can take multiple ones out of the herd without them actually spooking. I'm guessing I aimed a little bit too low and... Yeah, I definitely did. Uh, that was 170 meters and I was holding for like 160, so that would uh, make sense. But there's actually one really close right here. Let's get this guy down. And that should take him down cr pretty quickly. I'm curious if we got double lung at that uh, range as well. Let's take a look. The first shot was left lung liver. Uh, second shot was left lung and left humerus, so... That explains why the second shot didn't penetrate, but the first one actually did pretty decent. I think that could have maybe got double lung if we had the right angle. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at which one this was. I think this was the first one that we shot. This does appear to be the one that we shot from 250, so let's uh, get Hunter to quiet down a little bit and take a look at it. 252 meters, and we got ourselves a perfect right lung hit. And we actually got past the scapula, so we didn't end up hitting that, thankfully. But it did pretty well. You can very reliably get a 250 meter single lung shot. Uh, it's going to be even easier if they're perfectly broadside, but unfortunately this one was quartering a little bit, but we still managed to get in there. Well, I found the one that we uh, got the bad shot on, however, I'm not really worried about him. We're going to try a 300 meter shot on this doe right here. Unfortunately, it is going to be a little bit uphill, so that might affect the ballistics a bit, but... 
I think this still should be a good test of a 300 meter shot. Now, let's uh, see if we can actually prone. And yeah, we're in a good spot if, uh, <laughs> once again, if Hunter will stay out of the way. <laughs> he just uh, loves to jump in front of us today, it seems. But I think we can do this. Let's make sure we're 0 to 100. And then we got to use this bottom line. Uh, the wind is blowing to the right. I don't know if that's going to affect it, but let's hope not. Oh, yep, it definitely affected it a little bit. It actually went a little bit lower than I thought it would, too. Maybe it was farther than 300. Whoa, it was 350? What? 350 meters? How? That's crazy. I did not think that that was 350. I probably should have checked, but I guess that's my bad. So apparently this one's actually a bit more close to 300, so just try a shot on that one, and that actually looked like a solid hit. Uh, the question is, will it actually have the penetration from that angle at that range? Uh, looks like the answer is no, so quartering angles at 300 meters are a no-go. Uh, let's see what a broadside at 300 meters would be like. Okay, so I think this is about the best opportunity we're going to get to do a 300 meter shot. This one is about 311 away. Uh, we will get a little bit closer, but that is about as broadside as something could possibly get. So we could finally attempt this. We're 294 now. Let's back up just slightly and then go prone. Hopefully we won't end up hitting the terrain in front of us, but we're going to try it. We're going to try our best to get this shot to work. Let's uh, hope that I am correct with this line being 300. I think it is. I'm almost positive. Uh, we're about to find out, though. Let's just wait for him to lift his head, and then we'll get the shot. Oh, there we go. That looked solid. That looked really solid. I don't know if it actually... Yes, it did. It did get vital. So, there you have it. 300 meter shot with the air rifle on a white-tailed deer. That is impressive for something that is supposed to be relatively weak. And you know, there's a lot of people that don't like the air rifle because they think it's a uh, very weak and just inferior gun, but it does have its uses as you guys can see. It can be very reliable at long range, and it's incredibly quiet. Now, obviously, the air rifle for most people will not be a replacement for their normal M1 or 30-06 or 303 or 6.5, but it can be very reliable nonetheless. And I think for people that want something that's a bit quieter, this is probably a decent option. So, what have we learned today about the air rifle? I think one of the first things that we learned is that at close to mid-range, this rifle is incredibly reliable and can get double lung pretty easily on something like a white-tailed deer and is still incredibly quiet and does not spook everything off even at such a short range. However, once you start to move past 200 meters, that's when you kind of start to see a bit of a uh, drop-off in penetration and a little bit of a drop-off in accuracy as well. You can no longer take stuff like a quartering angle on a black-tailed deer and you also have quite a bit of issues if you end up hitting something like the shoulder blades. So I definitely would say that if you're wanting 100% uh, reliability, you don't necessarily want to go past 200 meters as much as possible because it does start to have issues at that range. However, at pretty much any range, it's incredibly silent. And in most cases, you can take out an entire herd if you time your shots properly. It's also inc incredibly uh, handy that the Hyperion scope can actually uh, use the mill dots for each 50 meters. That is an incredibly useful thing. And I think last of all, it's incredibly limited in the amount of animals that it can take. It can only take classes 2 to 4, but it does relatively well for uh, the classes that you can use it on. Honestly, I would like to see them bring a larger air rifle into the game and also a smaller one. I'd like to see an air rifle that can be used on birds and then I'd also like to see one that can be used on uh, something like a mountain lion or a mule deer. So hopefully in the future we can get something like that. But this buck right here, as you can see, 292 meters and we were able to get into the left lung pretty reliably. And that's actually a good sized deer as well, 231 scoring whitetail. Not bad at all. I'm pretty impressed with that performance. 
But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a bit of insight as to what the strengths and weaknesses of the air rifle is and also just another rifle that I think is incredibly underrated. Now, if you guys wanna see me take a look at another one, I believe this right here was episode five, if I'm not mistaken. So if you want me to do an episode six, then let's get this to 300 likes and we will pick out another underrated weapon. Uh, but with that being said, if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, click the like button and ring that notification bell so you guys will never miss a video. Also be sure to leave a comment down below on what guns you think are incredibly underrated and I will go through them. And if there's one that I see posted quite a bit, then we might make that the next episode. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Peace!